Joining us now to review some of the headlines of today's newspapers from around the world is Arise News analyst Emmanuel Ifini, <coughs> the great Malabite. Good morning, Good Ruben. Morning. Good morning. Good morning, Ayo. Good, Good morning, morning Rufa. Good morning, sir. Yes, we start the review with this day, Nigeria's newspaper of record. We start with the story above the masthead. Dangote, my refinery can save Nigeria $10 billion in FX, generate another $10 billion naira in exports. Yes, May 22 is the date uh, for the inauguration of the Dangote Refinery, the world's largest single train refinery. And um, of course, the projection sounding very nice. Task incoming administration on public private partnership. Well, it's like the Messiah or the savior of our petroleum industry that will bring to an end. Hopefully, the reign of subsidy. The reign of importation of finished petroleum products, uh, the Dangote refinery, the day is set. And just, you see, just on time, uh, because uh, that will give the new administration after May 29 some leeway to maneuver around this issue of subsidizing petroleum products imported into the country for a country that is blessed with crude oil, has four refineries that are not working. Now, the lead story, 10th National Assembly, APC National Working Committee meets today to ratify consensus zoning. Leadership Tosso worsens as 68 senators elect reject deal. Group wants Tinubu party not to plunge into crisis. Southeast senators caution president elect against injustice. ACF dissociates itself from ex Niger Delta ministers endorsement. Of course, the newspapers, the Nigerian newspapers, that is most of them, reporting on the impending battle for the leadership of the 10th National Assembly. Nigerian Tribune has that story also. Senate presidency. Southeast caucus kicks against Akpabio demands seats. Wants Tinubu to ensure country continues to thrive on path of equity, unity, fairness. While the Daily Trust newspaper also reporting this story, aspirants move against Tinubu's anointed candidate. What attracted me to present elect Abbas? We were not consulted. Was his camp? Endorsement, mere speculation, Gagdi. Betara declares today, not central, spoils for fight. While the, yes, uh, the New Telegraph newspaper also reporting this story, Senate Presidency, Yari to form alliance with PDP, offer DSP, that's Deputy Senate President to Southeast. Miss Atiku behind closed doors in Bielsa, Northwest senators elect Bakhiari. Their PDP counterparts reject Akpabio alliance on settles Tinimbu Akpabio APC leadership. Southeast Senate caucus urges Tinimbu to ensure region gets presidency, Senate presidency that is. While the Daily Sun newspaper Southeast senators demand Senate president seat. Hinge claimed on justice, fairness, equity. Advice Tinumbu against adopting current government's policy of excluding the Southeast zone from power equation. APC Senate caucus splits. Yes, negotiations, horse trading, maybe some backstabbing you will add. As the clamor for who becomes the Senate president takes its toll. The APC, the party with the majority seats in the Senate, not finding it easy to come to a consensus. But whatever consensus or arrangement they put in place that will be endorsed today by the National Working Committee of the party, well, will be subject to so the agreement of everybody. But you know, in politics, everybody cannot just 
row in the same direction, whether they are members of the same party or not. So expect some uh, some game changer, and you don't know where that will come from because with the the PDP um, now meeting with some sections of the APC, expect the PDP to weigh in on who becomes the Senate president. It's not an easy task for the party. It's not an easy task for the president-elect. In fact, Bola Ahmed Tinubu should know better because when he tried to install somebody in 2015, yes, it never worked. Bukola Saraki, who was not his political friend at that point in time, emerged as the Senate president. So we'll see how it pans out. Now, if we look at other newspapers quickly, yes, the, guard, the, the Punch newspaper, we'll take the Punch newspaper, Asset Declaration, CCB tells Tinimbu others to submit forms before May 29. Uh, asset Declaration ongoing in 36 states, no swearing in without form submission, CCB. Bureau says, defaulters risk removal from office 40 Ogun politicians um, obtain forms. Well, it's a constitutional requirement for all political office holders who have been so elected to fill the asset declaration form and submit to the Code of Conduct Bureau before being sworn in. And I don't think that's a difficult thing to do unless you want to hide some of your assets and you don't know which one to put and which one to keep out of the form. Otherwise, it should be a straightforward matter. A man should know his assets. And when they say, declare your assets, it shouldn't be a big deal. Now, the Guardian newspaper, businesses opt for unconventional debt as interest rate nears 35%. Now, the Nation newspaper was reporting the lead story, Senate House, APC National Working Working Committee to ratify zoning plan today. APC Northwest Chairman Okit Akbabio Barwao Yari won't support consensus candidate. Southeast Senators elect reject zoning to South South. Now, just above that story, Sudan crisis. Federal government warns against self evacuation. No one, no more Nigerian left at Egyptian border. Fourth batch of 834 citizens back. Yes, they came in four flights yesterday. Above that story, Keyamo petitions hearing can't end before May 29. Pre-hearing holds today. Of course, the presidential election petition tribunal kicking off the hearing today with that uh, pre-hearing uh, formalities and of course, the fireworks will start as expected. Now, the Abuja Inquirer newspaper, in major swoop, FCT police rescue 58 kidnapped victims, one victim killed in shootout. Well, if uh, kidnappers can gather as many of, as 58 victims around Abuja, and you ask, where is the security? But again, the police rising up to the occasion, and you give them kudos for that, for identifying this location, swooping in, and rescuing those who were in kidnappers den. But that should not be the end of the story. Those who are involved will be apprehended, made to face the law. That is when the job will have been completed. Now, the foreign newspapers quickly the Times of London, pa, we are all proud of you. Prince of Wales pays tribute to King at Windsor concert. Straight parties across the UK after coronation uh, washed by 20 million. Of course, the morning after the coronation of King Charles, the party continued yesterday uh, all around UK. Now, Robin, Rufai, and Ayo. Because we don't have time. First. The excitement over the fact that the Dangote refinery is finally going to come on stream, 650,000 barrels a day. The uh, launch will be on uh, May 22. And in this report uh, offered by this day newspaper, 
Uh, it's an interview with a large local Dangote in the economies. So the refinery will create jobs, certainly. It will promote public-private sector partnership. It would uh, perhaps help to check the challenge of smuggling. Some of these West African countries, they shut down their refineries because they get small good fuel from uh, Nigeria. But two issues. One, there must be good supply of crude. It would be strange if the Dangote refinery has to go and source crude oil at uh, exorbitant prices from elsewhere. Number two. The but refine at the market rate. Yes. Well, but the supply must be assured. Uh, two, the uh, Nigerian government still has to deal with the issue of first subsidy removal. And we keep saying that it's a matter of law. The appropriation of 2023 and also the PIA already gives the limit May 29. But there is a committee that is uh, meeting. But what would they do? Would they break the law the same way this same Nigerian government has broken the Section 38 of uh, the Central Bank Act uh, with regard to waste and means? Finally, the presidential election tribunal will begin sitting today. Yeah. Uh, the PDP has filed an application for an order to allow televised proceedings so that uh, you know all Nigerians can see how that is going. But we'll see how that is resolved. Some lawyers, including Fala and ASA, and I said, there's nothing wrong with televised proceedings yeah. at the presidential election petition. Uh, still at the discretion well, of the judges, you will say. Thank you so much, Mr. Feni. We're out of time now.